Forbes India in association with BNP Fariba held the third edition of the Forbes India Conversations, the Thought Leadership Forum. Bringing together senior business leaders and policy makers onto a single platform to discuss India's sustainability agenda. Oberoi Hotels and Resorts were the hospitality partners at the event. Recently renovated, the Oberoi New Delhi was the venue for the high-level discussions. Ryan Carvalho, editor of Forbes India, started the evening's proceedings with his opening remarks. Welcome to the Forbes India Conversations, the Thought Leadership Forum. The topic for today is the sustainability agenda. Sustainability rolls off the tongue pretty easily these days. Take care of Mother Earth is advice liberally given. It's a popular cause which may explain why there are so many people behind it. But let's not reduce sustainability to a cliche. Sustainability is at the end of the day about long-term strategy, integral to every operation. It is the essence of long-term development and profitability. Sustainability is a balancing act. The act of meeting the needs of the present without compromising the well-being of future generations. It is a fact that old models of consumption and industrialization will not support the world's growing population. We need new approaches. We need new approaches in agriculture, in manufacturing, in retail. We need buildings that are designed for maximum energy efficiency. We need renewable energy and public transportation systems that run on it. We need energy efficient products on shelves of local stores and much, much more. To discuss the need for building sustainable businesses and the need for developing sustainable societies, we have today put together two top class panels. The topic for the first discussion is this, why sustainability is good for business. And for that, I would like to invite our panelists on stage, Mr. Rahul Munjal, Chairman and Managing Director, Hero Future Engines. Charles Frum, Managing Director, Volvo Cars India. Alo Spore, Managing Director for India and South Asia, Alstom India. And Yoris Davis, CEO and Country Head, BNP Paribas. I would like to begin this discussion with a question. Right, in the context of sustainability, a section of economists has dispensed with the notion that growth brings prosperity. They would rather opt for a model of optimal rationing of scarce resources. So this begs the question, can the profit motive really be aligned with the interests of the planet? The short answer is I hope it can because that's my business. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the long answer is, uh, you know, you have to see what is the price of climate change. What is the price today? What is the price which is going to be for future generation, even if not for future generation, for our generation, five years hence or 10 years hence or 15 years hence. Right. You know, we know for a fact Trying to keep it down, to keep the temperature change down to two degrees today seems impossible. Right. Are we ready for the kind of disruption that will happen to the water table of the world? Today, sustainability or green businesses are not more expensive than business as usual. And I can talk about my own sector, which is solar. And I'm sure you'll try, like to go into more details of that later on in the conversation. I think, for me, it's, it's quite straightforward. I mean, basically, we, I think most product companies need to deliver what customers want. I think that more and more, our, our customers are very interested in sustainability. And, and, and when you look, we look at a lot of, a lot of studies, and we've seen uh, a, a recent Nielsen study that, that says that especially the millennials, they're willing to pay more for products that are, that are from a sustainable business. So we're, we're simply uh, you know, aligning with what customers want. And uh, in our mind, you know, now and, as, as, and going forward, we see that uh, sustainable companies, sustainable products are something that people want and, and, and will pay for. So it, it aligns very well for me. I think overall, on the flip side of people wanting to pay premium for sustainable product, there's also a lot of externalities are created, pollution, climate change, etc. And we probably need to come to, uh, to a position where 
that they, they are being paid for, either by consumers of products that generate these externalities or, or the producers of them. I think the perceptions towards sustainability is quite different depending on the countries. And in some places, people are ready, as you said, to pay for sustainable solutions. In other countries, people are still focusing on uh, addressing short-term requirements. And uh, obviously, the approach is not the same depending on which type of economics you are working. But I think um, one thing which can modulate this difference is that if people look, instead of investment or capex or short-term or acquisition cost, into lifetime cost. Right. Because generally, sustainable solutions prove cheaper in the long run. And when you look at lifetime cost, it makes a difference and it justifies itself. So Rahul, you got into this business about six years ago, right? That's when you decided to generate and distribute renewable energy. Yeah. I mean, what, what was the trigger at that time? And six years ago, probably there were not so many players as we have today. Yeah, you know, so the way to look at it, why do we have so many players today? And the reason we have so many players is because there was a business, a profitable business to be done in both as an IPP in wind as well as solar mm -hmm. and uh, the writing was on the wall when we got into it this was the pre-Modi era when the government's plan was to do only 20 gigawatts and uh, when Modi came out uh, with 175 to a lot of us even in the industry it seemed like a pipe dream we mm -hmm. never thought it would be possible but I think one of the reasons why we got into it because we one could see the writing was on the wall world had to go to renewables sooner than later. It was happening in the rest of the world. And India, we have 300, we have over 300 days of sunshine. You know, it just makes natural sense. Why would India not do solar? So there were a lot of reasons, and one could understand that. Right. And we were, we were one of the fortunate companies who saw this much before it became very fashionable to be okay. in renewables. Right, right. Yeah. So do you believe this target of uh, half of our energy requirements from renewables by 2030 is achievable? It's, it's actually 40%, but yes, I think, it is, I think it's definitely achievable. Okay. Um, there will be two or three factors that will determine this. One is, where does the price of storage or battery go? Because renewables had two problems. One was its price, it was expensive. Second, it, had, it was intermittent. Mm -hmm. So the problem of price we've solved. It's not expensive anymore. So today it makes economic sense to do a, a wind or a solar project but it's still intermittent. Now, how do you solve for that? The solutions all over the world are in storage, are in battery. It could be lithium ion, it could be some other technology. Uh, but, and the price curve that they are following are similar that of the solar panels. Right. So very soon, it will be cheaper to have solar plus battery, and it will be cheaper than to create uh, new power from a thermal plant. I know you, you've been particularly bullish about, uh, and you probably think we're not doing enough on that front, and that's hydroelectric uh, power. I, so uh, yeah. what, what is the potential here, and, and why don't you think we are getting there? I think when we talk of renewable policy in India, I miss one third component, as you said it, which is hydropower, which in fact is a very good complement to solar and to wind, because it has some of the advantages which are missing in the other two options. And I'm a little bit surprised when I saw India 10, 15 years ago so bullish about hydropower that all these projects have suddenly stopped and disappeared from the map. Maybe it could be interesting to look again how this energy mix, uh, solar, wind, could be complemented by hydro. I think India has really a card to play here. I think uh, clearly there is a good opportunity in India for the growth of electrical vehicles because obviously pollution and emission control in our cities is a major issue for all of us. We see it every day wherever we are living, not only in Delhi. So I think it's clearly an interesting and it's a good focus for India to look into this direction. I think it's uh, incredibly important. In fact, you know, you look at you know, the, the most important part of our business is really tracking what, what customers want and delivering what they want. And clearly, you know, especially with the, the young millennials now, we see that uh, sustainability uh, is, is a very important part of what, what, uh, what those new customers want. So aligning uh, our products with sustainability is, is really a, a matter of, of, of existence for us. So in, in fact, you know, we're taking this quite seriously at Volvo and 
have uh, announced now that uh, by 2025, we're going to have over a million electrified ve vehicles on the road. So we're uh, very much uh, supportive of uh, a sustainability agenda and I think it's vital to our future. sustainability is relevant and that's transportation mm -hmm. and probably Charles you could uh, weigh in on this and uh, till recently we seem to be very keen on having an electric vehicle policy mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. but right now I mean for good or bad or probably for good I think we've, we've kind of uh, gone slow on that and and probably that could widen the scope of alternative uh, technologies for yeah. transportation mm -hmm. so do you think besides electric the scope for other avenues also like first of all here see you know sitting here with uh, representatives from you know the hydro the you know proponents of hydro and 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 solar you know one of the we're, we're clearly um, as an industry headed towards an electrified future mm -hmm. and one of you know when you talk about you know that future you know coming together with clean power is, is really, when it comes to transportation, that's, that's a real enabler for us. So I think it's, it's great to have this kind of forum where we can come, come together, the transportation industry and the power generation industry, and, and, and see a, a, a future for, for India. But I, I think for us, you know, we have, you know, in, in, in general in the industry, I, electrification is, I believe, the answer. Right. And and I've seen, uh, you know, I, I think that the Modi government is on to uh, the right kind of vision in looking out to 2030 and having electrified cars. Yeah, Raul, you want to weigh in, yeah? Yes, yeah. I want to discuss one thing about, and I want to um, spe specifically talk about when we move to electric, what happens? Mm -hmm. So if we move to electric today, we're just shifting a burden from burning gas to burning coal because electricity comes from coal. Exactly. So you cannot shift the burden. You need to have renewables in there to make electric actually a more a better environmental solution uh, for the country or for the globe. Right. So we do not want to shift the burden. And I think if we, 2030 is the date or 2035, I don't know if it's 30% or 100%. So government is making a lot of noise, but there is no policy yet. We, you know, yes. hopefully there will be a policy soon, okay. but the whole point is before we go electric, we should be electric on renewables, not on coal. What does India need to do to really increase the green investments and align financial markets with sustainable development? Okay. That's, um, well, a lot, obviously. <laughs> um, I, th I think the first, uh, the first point is that what, what's still required is a definition of green. So mm -hmm. setting standards, what does it actually mean? to be green and in the financial sector it's uh, a discussion it's an ongoing discussion not just within the financial sector but with with civil society there is a working definition for green bonds but what exactly is a green loan what exactly is green supply chain financing mm -hmm. is still still very much to be defined once we're there then it's very much uh, a matter of incentives and that's where government and public policy inevitably plays an important role. It can be positive or negative. There can be tax incentive, there can be subsidies for businesses that are under agreed standards uh, considered to be sustainable. Okay, at this point, uh, I'll take a break and I'll like to get some questions from the audience. And I'm sure there will be quite a few people who want to ask some questions. I stay in Rajori Garden of uh, heart of the capital of New Delhi. I would like to install the green energy conversation in my rooftop and uh, I understand that there are two solutions. One is the solar energy and one is the wind power. Now I understand from various organizations that in Delhi it is not possible because the wind flow is not sufficient to generate the, uh, the energy 
uh, by way of wind flow and of course there is a solution for solar energy but then the cost is very important so do you have any solution for that the reality is today if you put solar rooftop on your roof the cost of energy is less than 5 rupees per unit and i think all of us in our homes are paying a lot more than that per unit to the government any which way it's the one time cost that makes a difference and the good news here is uh, we've been working very closely with the ministry and there is a there is some announcement that the ministry is going to make i don't i don't know what it's called shrishti or something the the program is called where they're going to incentivize homeowners to put up rooftops and uh, i think the government will give some kind of a subsidy i'm thomas matthew from amplus energy and we work in the same uh, domain as uh, mr munjal in the in the solar field and also we work across other other energy solutions see uh, what the government says is that 175 gigawatts of uh, of renewable energy in one way but you find that the policies the regulations and the state regulations keep on increasing the barriers against this so no there, there seems to be a, a complete uh, incongruence between what is being announced and what is being implemented now how do we get that to the government and say that okay this is what is happening on the ground which is absolutely opposite to what is being announced hello quick uh, comment to that dissonance between government and i policy. think uh, globally i would put up pacing more general one of the issues which we have when we talk of sustainability and we addressed it at the beginning of the discussion is that sustainability means sometimes spending more money at the beginning in order to save in the long run and clearly one obstacle in promoting these approaches particularly in our field in rail transport is that all the procurement is done under the L1 procurement rule you have to be cheapest whatever is the innovation whatever is the quality whatever is the specificity of the product which you are offering and i think that's another aspect of something on which some explanation and some discussions could take place to change a little bit the procurement model giving some importance to performance to import content and to other parameters and just the price right i just have one more last question and uh, this is b- uh, basically ba- based on what happened in germany last week where they said that they were considering free public transport to actually reduce road traffic and emissions can that ever be an option in india i think uh, here also we touch a subject which was touched earlier alstom as a company has clearly solutions to reduce and to optimize i would say the operations of transport like fuel cell trains in germany like uh, electric buses which gain innovative innovation uh, prices but these solutions are today not yet accepted are not yet adapted to the principles here in the country particularly because of this L1 uh, procurement concept which is really an obstacle but i believe this is going to change because people are becoming more and more aware that quality that innovation creativity can make a difference in the long run and i am optimistic about this evolution Charles, free public transport. Yeah, no, I, I think it's important to look at lots of different options and to be innovative. So, you know, I, 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 I think that's exciting in, in Germany. But I, I, I also think that, uh, you know, business is run by, you know, what consumers want. And is that really what consumers want? And I, I would question that that's what consumers want. So, you know, I, I, I guess what, what is the issue that we're trying to solve? And, you know, the issue to me is, is emissions and climate change. I like the vision of the government and where they're headed. Mm-hmm. There's a I I think a strong vision towards sustainable energy. There's a strong vision towards sustainable mobility, but how do we get there and what are the incent the incentives aren't yet in place and aligned with that. Okay. Thank you very much gentlemen. I think we can safely conclude that sustainability is not going to be at the expense of development and profitability, right? Thank you. Time for wind and solar to be mainstream is now. Storage as we see it should start coming up in the next 12 to 16 months. But no new coal plants should come up. But the previous coal plants that we already had, we should ensure we don't do any retrospective changes because there were investments made in good faith. We need to determine what does it mean to be sustainable? What does it mean to be aligned with the sustainable development goals? 
Today, a lot of investments, a lot of actions are being called green, are being called organics, are being called many names. But we, it's really necessary to determine what exactly it takes to provide a positive contribution to the environment, to the development of society.